the beginning of finals weekend finally in alliance tournament eight we are starting things off with road cabal versus own alliance i'm kill two i'm here with darius johnson on the left in red we have a rattlesnake a golem a vulture a basilisk a hugin a saber three worms and a dramiel and for the own alliance we have a claymore a slipe near a hur two hurricanes a scimitar three hounds a nemesis and a dramiel lots to talk about the ranges um you guys should see shortly are pretty far. We have about the max distance between both these teams. Uh, I'm really curious about this Rote Capel team. This looks a lot like the kind of turtle setup we saw actually at the end of qualifying um, day two, where we have a Basilisk and then some other Kaldari ships that look like they could do kind of a cap transfer tank. But this configuration looks a lot more kind of um, expensive and also a lot more interesting because it's got the Rattlesnake and the Golem instead of just a Raven. It's also got the Worms, which uh, can put a lot of Ewar in the mids, and, and uh, we haven't seen a lot of them in the tournament, but they're very cool. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite things about Finals Weekend is um, seeing the expensive things come out and then uh, subsequently explode. So here we go. Things underway. I'm curious to see. Every time I see a Golem, I want it to be, or a Rattlesnake, I want it to be a uh, Torps. But um, so far, it's... Uh, to be determined, I guess. Everything kind of getting moving a little slowly, not a lot of um, speed, at least on the Rokapel side. Um, and it looks like, for whatever reason, Own Alliance um, a little slow to head across the field, but they're getting over there now. That they are. They have a lot of drones. So there's yeah, yeah, just uh, shield main maintenance, maintenance bots, bots, actually, which is a little unusual uh, for a team. Um, well, not that unusual, I guess. They've got the scimitar there. The, the maintenance bots will support the... Um, the scimitar no doubt and any other ships taking damage so still no damage uh, looks like saber starting to take a little and they are some torps uh should be coming from i assume both if one of them has them um, rattlesnake for sure uh saber gonna be that first uh hurricane actually is tackled um on the own alliance side so those torps uh working on that hurricane see how well the scimitar is able to keep him alive uh actually it looks like they're keeping them alive just fine the repping is going on on both sides the hurricane and the saber um, you can see a laser there in the shot. That's the golem running a target painter and definitely this uh, rattlesnake running neutralizers as well. Um, the damage from the torps should pick up as the main target slows down. Speed really makes a big difference as the uh, explosion velocity on torps is very bad. So um, uh, hopefully the amount of damage they're able to put out picks up a bit as the, the tackle gets better on the hurricane. But it doesn't really look like it. He's, well, half shields now, so starting to go down. Still not a real significant amount of damage being taken by any of the... Rokapel ships, a worm finally starting to take a little bit of damage, and he's all the way up at the other end For of the field. Um, harassing, a, looks like a hurricane, actually. Yes, and we see that hurricane now to start to dip into armor and uh, into structure for the own alliance team. Um, they do have some damage spread around to some of the hounds as well, um, but as they've closed, it looks like they've been able to get that done. So... Um, there goes a hurricane. This looking pretty good. Actually, this golem now hurting pretty bad. He's definitely getting reps from the uh, Rokapel Basilisk, who's um, got an afterburner going for the moment, it looks like, and he's a good good distance away from the main part of the fight. But um, those reps not keeping this golem up. The, the Minmatar Battlecruiser is putting up enough damage uh, in combination with those bombers to bring down this golem. So that hurts really bad. That's obviously a huge part of this Rokapel team, and there it goes. And I do a silent cheer as something expensive explodes. On the Own Alliance team, uh, we have a Hurricane again in half shields. Um, the DPS on them still kind of spread around as they feel things out. This is, uh, yeah, surprising that, that that Golem went down so fast. Um, it, we saw a target painter at least in the mid, so maybe they were expecting to not be under quite as much damage pressure. Uh, thought the Basilisk would be able to keep it up without a problem, but obviously four stealth bombers plus uh, four battle cruisers is a lot of damage. It, 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 you know, damage on those um, bombers doing uh, max against uh, against that Golem, and they do plenty anyway. So bad news for, for them. That it is. On the own alliance side, we now have a nemesis going into half shields. They're still kind of feeling around, trying to get away, uh, uh, trying to get around those reps. Um, and they're 
the Vulture on the uh, Rogue Capel side now uh, at about 25% shield. Um, it, it, what it looks like they're doing is kind of switching targets, trying to find a hole in the uh, uh, the reps of the, the opposing team on either side. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I don't... Obviously kind of a bad setup for them to run into, but bombers have to be something you expect to be able to fight. That's been really common in this tournament, and I imagine it will be more and more common heading into um, the rest of the weekend. I'm surprised they don't really, well, they have the Hugin. I feel like Rogue Capel kind of isn't prepared to deal with kind of a kind of a faster, smaller setup, which seems strange because that's been kind of the norm. They, you know, they're running the shield tank, um, bombers even, so there's not even damps. It's not like locks were the problem for Rogue Capel. They just aren't able to put enough damage pressure onto the own team, so... Um, Owen looking really good right now. The Vulture, which probably has the strongest tank on the Rokapel side, is hurting bad and should be going down really shortly. Yeah, as Kill2 said, uh, it, it, it looks like while the Rokapel team uh, has a little bit of trouble uh, getting the DPS on the Own Alliance side, uh, Own Alliance doesn't appear to have any trouble uh, doing damage to the uh, uh, Rokapel side. Wow, you oh. were talking, Darius, about target switching and uh, Rogue Capel going for that scimitar, and it went down really fast. I didn't even notice his shields were dropping, and already it's in armor, so that could actually be a huge deal if this Vulture uh, recovers, which it actually is for the moment, and they lose their logistics on the own side. This match could turn around, potentially. Uh, that seems really unlikely, considering uh, how fast the Golem dropped out for Rogue Capel, but at this point, I don't know. It's uh, kind of anyone's game right now. And as that scimitar went down, you'll notice that the uh, shields on the Vulture are back up over 50%. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know yeah, whether they hit a panic recovery. button. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Maybe, uh, I don't know. That's just so weird. Um, I mean, I guess maybe the Basilisk had lost a lock and wasn't able to rep for a while. But from what I've been able to tell for most of this match, there's not really an abundance of E-War. I don't see damps running on the... Um, on at least the bombers that I had looked at up to this point. I see target painters, but since they have the scimitar there, I assume there's uh, a little bit of shield tank, and yeah, it doesn't look like any damps. Um, and I, I doubt that the, the you know, the Slipner, the Claymore are running any kind of target um, uh, offensive view where they've got smart bombs and stuff, but uh, now things getting bad for own fast. They lost a bomber and a Dramiel, and a second bomber going down right now, so Rogue Capel's really turned this match around for whatever reason. Own uh, gave up on the Vulture, switched to the Hugin, and the Hugin goes down. So, still really close game. I'm liking Roe Capel's chances, but this is crazy. Yeah, once they, uh, they lost that Scimitar, Own seems to have uh, uh, kind of dropped pretty quickly, actually, um, it compared to how things were going for a while. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a handle on what's happening here. I'm looking at uh, one of the remaining bombers, and it um, looks like he isn't tackled yet, but he's not far enough away that it should be too big of an issue as the second to last bomber does go down. Now own switching to the Basilisk, something they haven't done so far in this fight. The Basilisk pretty close to the middle of the action. Um, but, oh, and he's going into armor and structure. Jeez, this is like really hard to call right now. <laughs> Three battlecruisers left on the own side again. Still a rattlesnake, which is a huge obstacle in all those frigs. Um, plus the Vulture, Rokapel still probably in good shape, but a Really, really back and forth match. Yeah, it's actually kind of interesting how things uh, start off kind of slow and then immediately things just explode very quickly. The uh, it, now we're hitting what's kind of an ebb again as the sleep slipe near uh, goes into about 50% shields on the own alliance side. Uh, not a lot of damage uh, being done to Rogue Capel at the moment, um, which is actually kind of surprising considering they just lost their basilisk. Uh, this is just. The craziest match. This shows how important target calling is. You know, these guys tested at least a, a tank or two on each side that really were not falling and then were able to still switch and turn things around. Um, when that golem went down, it really looked like the match was over, um, but it obviously not at all as the Slipner heads into armor and um, no more support really remaining at all. He has uh, three shield bots on him, but that's not going to make any difference. And will lose him, and it looks like damage has pretty much stopped coming from the Own Alliance team, even though um, Roe Capel doesn't have any logistics left either. There's uh, one of these worms taking damage, but that doesn't matter too much. Well, that worm is now gone, um, but it, I, that's not going to have, a, a yeah, as you said, much of an impact on the outcome of this fight. Um, with just a Claymore and a Hurricane left on the Own Alliance side, um, we're in a, a kind of a sit-and-wait pattern here now. Uh, 
the inevitable has arrived. Ah, there goes the Saber. Still ships dropping. It's crazy. It's so unusual to see a match where there's so little um, kind of uh, target-based E-War, where all the ships can shoot all the way until the end of the match. Usually by the time we get this late in the match, the E-War battle has been decided and one side or the other can't do any more shooting at all, but ships still continuing to drop for both sides. And kind of the tanks on these own alliance ships holding better than I would expect for um, having no support at all. I suppose that could be said for both sides, though. This Rattlesnake still close enough to the fight to uh, be able to apply damage to um, all the remaining own alliance ships. Uh, if, if anyone's unfamiliar with the format, we talked a lot about points and how important they were in the first round. Points only matter at this point if um, the match goes to time and there's ships left on both sides, which won't happen in many of the matches. It's all about winning. Single em uh, elimination moves you to the next round. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter really that, that own alliance got a lot of kills, even though they're not going to um, get all the kills, I guess. Yeah, so uh, whether whether Own Alliance sticks in and, and, and kills everything or not, um, it's actually the last man standing on the field that counts. Um, the Own Alliance Hurricane is now down to 25% shields. They're trading fire with the Dramiel on the Rogue Capel side. Um, it's looking to me like, oh, there's at least one E-War mod. The first one I've seen, it looks like one of the worms probably running a damp. Um, it's weird, the Hurricane that's under pressure right now is not webbed, which really hurts for the... Um, the Torp Fire from the Rattlesnake. He's not moving very fast, so it shouldn't matter much, but I'm surprised um, kind of at the lack of tackle. If you're running Torps, you really got to have plenty of tackle. I guess they were counting on the Hugin, which is gone now. Um, regardless, though, the own Hurricane going down, and that'll just leave the Claymore uh, for Rokapel to finish off. And as he drops, he does uh, I may take that Tramiel with him, or he may make a liar out of me. <laughs> Ah, this is just weird. I'm surprised the Dramiel really gets hit at all. It seems like without any webs, I don't know, maybe the Claymore or the Slipner had a web, but I'm surprised they were able to hit it. Um, anyway, Dramiel's okay uh, now. He's staying away from the fight for the moment. I don't think they really need him at this point. Uh, so Claymore, Claymore is obviously the last thing standing. He's not tackled. But I guess that doesn't make much of a difference. The Vulture and Rattlesnake will be enough um, regardless. Just a really bizarre match. I'm, I'm really curious about what the reason for the Worms were. I guess they were probably dampening, but I really didn't see much of that. And we didn't see the effects of it too much from, from what we could tell. It really looked to me like all the ships on the field were able to fire right from the start. Yeah, and as you said earlier, it's usually it, usually what happens is the the e war battle is decided, and then one team just kind of squashes the other one. We had a lot right. of back and forth in, in a very bizarre ways. Yeah, the Vulture here on the um, Rokapel team running a neutralizer, that's a little weird. Uh, I suppose it's fine, but usually if there's leftover highs on this command ships, people have been using smart bombs. Uh, the nuke kind of says to me they wanted to use it as like a heavy tackler, but then I don't see any webs or scrams, so that's not really its role, I guess. I don't know. Weird, weird setups. Pretty awesome match to watch, though. The back and forth is always cool. Uh, just one ship left now, though. Yeah, it, it, if nothing else, what it does deliver is a kind of edge of, uh, of your seat. You don't know what's going to come next. So, oh, God, something else has exploded kind of interest factor. Yeah, it's just weird when it looks like it's headed a, dire a, a direction. You know, there's matches we get where there's lots of damage on both sides, and it's obvious it's going to be kind of a back and forth. But this one didn't look necessarily like that. It looked like um, it should tip one way or the other and kind of head that direction, but it didn't. Anyway... Claymore now in armor and about to go down, and that will finish. So uh, um, Rope Hell will move on, which uh, was the studio's favorite, so they'll be happy about that. And Own Alliance will be out of the tournament. The Own Alliance has been owned. Very clever, Darius. Very clever. That's what I do. So there it goes. And we'll go back to whoever has the camera next. Probably lovely Mr. Soundwave.